In this episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks, we have Captain Alderlake of Gaming from Intel joining us next. <laughs> Welcome back, my brothers and sisters, to yet another fine episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks live stream, webcast, podcast, whatever kind of cast you want to have it. That's what we're going to be serving up today. And we have special guests with us, of course. We'll get to them shortly or a guest, I should say. Yeah, he may have dual personalities, I'm not sure. Marco's here though, as always, and he's singular personality last I checked. How you doing, buddy? Are you a little ragged today or how you doing? I'm okay, I still have a lot of work to do tonight in preparation for tomorrow, but I can't complain. I have my, my buddies, oh, wrong shoulder. Buddies, wrong shoulder again, over there. They're behind <laughs> me, uh, supporting me. Um, this is weird working in the camera, but looking forward to this chat. This is, um, this is gonna be an exciting one. Yes, yes, absolutely. We have a big launch tomorrow, and we have a special guest from Intel joining us today. Chris is here behind the knobs and dials, going to keep us uh, looking and sounding good, hopefully. Chris, how you doing this afternoon? Hanging in there. Hanging in, yeah. Are you excited for the Alder Lakes, uh, or is it kind of the proof is in the pudding for you? I mean, that's always my stance, but definitely excited. <laughs> it, it does sound promising, so we'll we'll see how it all pans out tomorrow. Yes, and the, the gentleman we have with us today will uh, help us explore uh, the new Intel Alder Lake platform. Uh, Marcus Kennedy, General Manager of Gaming Division Client Computing Group at Intel. Welcome to the stream, otherwise known as Captain Alder Lake. Good to see you, bud. <laughs> good, good to be here, though. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I haven't heard the Captain Alder Lake uh, thing yet. I, I should uh, I should put that on my LinkedIn, too. <laughs> it, I, th I figured it, it was good with the motif behind you with the Marvel uh, and, um, you know, Avengers characters oh, there going on. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you could probably tell. Uh, now, see Marco's background. I, got, I had to match it. And so you see, uh, you know, I'm a big comic book fan. I'm wearing my uh, my Joker shirt uh, here. I'm crazy. The bottom says for her, just to be clear. Uh, just, I'm crazy. It's a, I'm crazy for her. Uh, but I call my wife the Harley to my Joker. Like it's a it's a thing for us. We dressed up as Marvel or as DC characters, uh, bat villains for Halloween, whole family. Um, I, I was uh, I was Harley Quinn, just to be clear. <laughs> oh, wow, wow! I, I, I that must have been a sight for, oh, for was, some eyes. I don't it know. It was awesome. It's publicly <laughs> available, though. Uh, I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't search for it if I were you. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So yeah, welcome to the cast. And uh, we've we've been working with you for a while now. We've gotten the pre briefs on on Alder Lake. Uh, it's it's good to have you with us. We wanted to dive into this. Tomorrow's a big day. Uh, the unveiling of uh, independent reviews and performance and analysis of your new hybrid architecture uh, desktop platform. Um, so sure to be fascinating stuff. But let's start with you first. Let's stay on you for a minute and uh, talk about um, your purview at Intel. So General Manager, Gaming Division, Client Computing Group at Intel. Yeah. Um, you're uh, you're kind of a big deal. Tell us uh, <laughs> tell us your responsibilities and what goes on over there. For you. Uh, you, you said it, not me. No, I, uh, my, <laughs> the full title, uh, so uh, it's gaming, uh, but not just gaming. So, so I drive our gaming creator and esports programs uh, in, our, in our client computing uh, group. Uh, my accountability falls mainly on the desktop side from a processor perspective, but as you can imagine, esports and uh, things like like that uh, go across form factor. Uh, I also do some things with cloud gaming and a, a few other things like that. Um, but yeah, so so my purview uh, is you can think about it as all things gaming, which is cool because I'm an avid gamer. I, I, I used to be a professional video game player uh, on a variety of games. I, I game all the time. I got my kids uh, engaged on it, so it's a hobby, and I just happen to back would fall into a job uh that that lets me marry my passion uh at work that is that's a good gig that's what they call a good gig marcus good job excellent i think so and yeah and um and what just by chance could you could you give us a little hint about what's uh maybe your favorite game you're you're digging into these days have you been oh geez have you had time <laughs> uh, run the run up to well, launch the game maybe is well, it well yeah i mean you know uh i do get a chance to test too so it's great um so I, i'll tell you uh the fav my favorite game so right now so i used to i used to play smash brothers uh professionally so i actually uh, play smash Brothers with my kids love doing that uh on my pc i i i, I love to play age of empires uh I'm, I'm still a big fan of three kingdoms i play that all the time uh, in Counter Strike, uh, which is another game I used to play uh, that I just uh, love love digging into. Um, 
on the PlayStation back there. I, I'm playing uh, God of War. Finally, working through my backlog of console titles, uh, and so so working on God of War right now. Wow. So yeah, you're you're definitely legit in terms of <laughs> uh, in terms of digging in on the gaming side. You know, you know, frankly, you know, we when when we meet you know a lot of different semiconductor execs, and you know, some say they're gamers, and you know, some just sort of are posing. You are clearly not posing. You are clearly a. a, a <laughs> a gamer like with professional chops in your pedigree huh wow yeah yeah like i said i kind of happened to backwards <laughs> fall into this i wish i could take credit uh for actually being in this job i uh <laughs> I, I, if i had known that this job existed when i was when i was going working on my engineering degree i probably would have targeted it but uh but i didn't know and back then i was just building computers to go play at land tournaments and so i just wow. happened to kind of fall into this so so yeah i, I am a gamer uh, i've kind of passed that along to my kids i i built a gaming computer with my with my daughter uh, it's upstairs she named it jonathan then for some reason she's also crazy uh, and, uh, uh, the other day uh, just last gaming story just for a moment uh, the other day I was I was talking to my youngest my six-year-old uh, we were talking about it was a conversation starter card it said you know what was your favorite memory or you know what was your most proud accomplishment and she said beating me at Smash Brothers uh, one round recently which you know made me proud <laughs> that, uh, that that was like really at, at her accomplishment though you know I had to quibble with her beating me because it was in a free-for-all so I don't really count <laughs> competitive gamer. Six, I don't let her win. <laughs> yeah, man. Competitive gamer through and through. Clearly. Yeah. The, the, the daughter does not get the, uh, the freebie or the pass. No way. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta raise them right. You gotta raise them tough. Good job. That's right. <laughs> Excellent. 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 Well, you know, I mean, it's it certainly, um, it, you know, it, as you alluded to earlier, your engineering degree set you up for, um, you know, a, a burgeoning market that has exploded probably since you went to school, since you were in college. Um, you seem like a young guy, but um, at any rate, yeah, I mean, I, now gaming is big business and certainly big business for Intel. And it's good to see you folks are uh, keenly focused on it. Uh, and certainly with the launch of Alder Lake as well. Um, good stuff for sure. So Marco, <clears throat> yes. we'll have to, we'll have to, We'll have to dig into some questions and we'll uh we'll offer that folks in the in the chat please feel free to to pepper us uh send us some cues if you have them for marcus and we'll uh, try and get them on and uh keep it nice keep it civil and we won't have to drop the band hammer and all that good stuff right <laughs> exactly yeah as uh anybody that's been on our streams knows you know we don't we don't uh allow any troll in here so if if you're going to be mean in the comments we're probably going to ignore you so if you have a question be respectful um and ask something that you're likely to get an answer for if you ask about something next gen what have you you're not going to get an answer so don't 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 waste the, the uh, typing time on stuff like that thanks for that there i don't want go. to be the bad guy <laughs> <laughs> there you go we, we 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 will try not to get you in trouble but inevitably we do kind of step in it once in a while and you can just guide us to step out of it you and me both, my friend. So uh, <laughs> we'll work on it together. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. What? What? Okay, we already got one from Val. What's one game <laughs> he's excited for to come out? That's a good question. Before we get to the, all the like stuff, from Ooh, Val. That, Val's uh, one of our streamer friends. Ooh, that is that is a really good question. Um, so uh, I, I'd say the, the Guardians game that just came out. Uh, I I know it, I know it just launched, but I've been so excited because we've been seeing that for so long uh, to come out that uh, that it still feels like it's not out to me, and I, I haven't actually dove into that game yet. So uh, the Guardians game, I plan on playing that on the PC on my next Alder Lake build. Um, and then I'd say that the second one I'd I'd add uh, is uh, Diablo Four. Uh, I I just mm. I love I love those games, and so uh, I can't wait for that one to come out. Every time I see the trailer, I get goosebumps. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Good stuff for sure. I haven't played around with guardians yet. I think I installed it. Marco, have you checked that out? That looked pretty cool. Actually. I, I didn't, I have been uh, busy retesting five platforms on windows 11. So I think I put in like 50 busy. hours this last week and a half. I'm a little frazzled, no game time. Um, but man, up. yeah, I, I will. I'll definitely play that because it's actually looking like one of the better reviewed like comic book adaptations for the PC in particular. So yeah, uh, that I'll definitely check out. I haven't. I haven't yet. You know, I the newest game I've tried was Back for Blood, and I am just sorely oh. disappointed. So oh, disappointed, man. and you know, it just it pushed me back to Left for Dead. <laughs> 
Yeah, Left 4 Dead was Left 4 Dead was amazing, and the, the Guardians game, right? We we did it with uh with Square Enix, and uh, it's the same same company that that we partnered with for Avengers. And so, you know, the way they pulled the Avengers together and that kind of the team dynamics was really good. And I think they've really polished that mechanism and uh the the gaming uh kind of framework for that. So uh, I'm I'm really excited to play that game. Very cool, very cool. And and folks, you should be really excited for after this cast as well. Uh, at 7.30, Val uh, comes on the uh, Hot Hardware Twitch line. She'll be game streaming for us. So check in. That's, that's Val in the comments there, uh, our uh, Twitch streamer extraordinaire. Um, but anyways, let's let's dig into the tech, shall we? And uh, sure. see if we can have some fun with this. So um <clears throat> Independent reviews are upon us. Alder Lake launch is tomorrow. Folks are going to be able to buy Alder Lake tomorrow, right? All the Lake components and all that good stuff. Yep, that's right. right. Uh, right. Sales embargo lifts. What's your favorite cape? Oh, oh, he's teasing the i9 already. Oh. <laughs> My kids call it golden waffle. Because of the, the waffle. <laughs> it is, yeah. Yeah. That's it's some, amazing. That's some, yeah, we, we wish the wafers were that small. They're actually <laughs> yeah, like, no, like, yay, right? <laughs> seriously. <laughs> um, what's your favorite capability of Alder Lake in terms of the platform for enthusiasts and general consumers alike? And, and I, you know, I sort of, maybe you can toss in a couple if you don't have to, if you don't want to settle on one, but just in general, it seems like the, the platform is, you know, so new, so fleshed out with a bunch of new technology, in addition yeah. to your hybrid architecture, what's kind of, you know, near and dear to your heart with this, with this new platform? Interesting for you. Yeah. Near and dear to my heart. It's a, it's a good question. You know, um, beyond just being, you know, launched on our, uh, on our next uh, process technology, right? The Intel 7 process technology, which is good because it's the first uh, platform on desktop uh, on that technology. As an old manufacturing guy, that gets me excited, right? Um, but that wasn't the question you asked. You asked uh, for consumers um, and, and enthusiasts. And so I'd say two, two real things um, for me. Uh, one, is that uh, the hybrid hybrid cores, right? And everything that we've enabled to make the hybrid cores really work together. So uh, for the uninitiated here, what I'm talking about is uh, this new technology, not, not only is it the next node uh, on desktop uh, processors, but it's also a totally new kind of revolutionary architecture for us where we have, uh, I, I like to call them big and bigger cores, uh, performance cores and efficiency cores. Um, and the, the performance cores are the most performant uh, highest performing cores that we've launched on process on client processors ever. Um, I, I can I can give lots and lots of technical details, and I'm sure we'll get into that uh, in, in a bit. But uh, suffice it to say that these things just scream, right? And, they, and we've got up to eight of those cores uh, in this launch. But we've also uh, included um, for hybrid up to eight efficiency cores. And these efficiency cores, the reason why I say that they're big and bigger, right? Bigger being the performance cores and big being efficiency cores is these things have the same kind of performance as our Comet Lake processors, which is two generations ago. So it's not like these are really small cores that we're, you know, that we're just throwing in to do really, really kind of high, low end applications. These things are very performant and two generations ago, we're, we're top of the line too, right? And so when you put those together, what, what you get uh, is you get the ability to really scream on your high performance, uh, single threaded uh, capabilities, but you also then get multi-threaded applications that you can then go uh, they go launch uh, at great efficiency. So just a number here that, that I, I love. Um, it's, uh, I think, 30% uh, more efficient than uh, or at par uh, with, with, our, with our last generation processor um, for multi-threaded applications at 30% lower power, right? So uh, I, I think that's just a great stat because we just launched Rocket Lake earlier this year. And so that just gives you a sense of the evolutionary shift uh with, with this with this uh launch so that's the first one uh is the hybrid architecture uh the second one i think that gets me excited for the enthusiast community um man man just two uh is the future proofing <laughs> right uh I, I i'm big on roi right return on investment uh and, and so uh, for me being able to buy a thing and have it be ready for future investments and you know ha only have to buy once uh, and then go in and, and drive the best experiences possible because you know you're getting the best um, it's not just the best in terms of performance but it's also uh, we, we're also launching that capability to be ready for DDR5 
and for PCIe Gen 5. Now, DDR5, right, is coming out with this launch, but PCIe Gen 5s don't exist yet, and but but they will be ready uh, to, to pair it with this other lake once they are ready to come launch. And because that'll be double the bandwidth uh, through your PCIe lanes as PCIe Gen 4, we think that that's just going to lead to all kinds of experiences that you'll be able to go to go drive with this uh, that don't exist today. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, good stuff for sure. Um... Yeah, very advanced uh, sort of technology in the platform, PCI Express Gen 5. Well, I want to get to that in a little bit as well. Um, interesting um, commentary on the perf per watt um, advantages of Alder Lake. Mm -hmm. I, I, I also heard, um, you know, a, a metric quoted for this that was it something like two or four uh, efficiency cores can fit in the silicon real estate of a Rocket Lake core did i have that right i was it was it two or four of them or something like anyways they're they're tiny but uh performance. <laughs> yeah, <four. laughs> yeah that's right that's right they uh they they can fit so the the performance cores that we have uh in this generation uh you can fit uh the four inside of one uh roughly right and so it's it's okay. it's pretty yeah pretty amazing and and we pack them in there so that we can optimize on that multi-threaded and you know as you mentioned uh you know i, I talked about that 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 efficiency commentary, right? Um, you know, multi-threaded applications are really important, right? Uh, not just for creators, right? Uh, whether you're running Adobe or whether you're running uh, Revit or whatever, um, but also for gaming too, right? Uh, some games scale with cores. Uh, and so capping out, you know, at eight doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? So we wanted to make sure we packed as many cores as possible. So developers who do want to scale with cores can scale with cores that are performant as well, just like uh, the, the common licks of the past. Gotcha. And this is an interesting question that just came up in the chat and an answer mm -hmm. from from Hot Hardware here, <laughs> Chris at the knobs, I think. Um, but let's talk about that real briefly as well. You've got eight performance cores, uh, four efficiency cores. Do I have that right? Oh, no, excuse me. Eight efficiency eight cores eight. in a full <clears throat> in a full. Yeah. Uh, Twelve nine hundred K, for example, eight and eight. Um, yeah. We've got 24 threads. Yeah. What's the reason What's for that? Asked? You would think eight, eight and eight would be, you know, uh, 32 threads. Yeah, it's, it's a good math. question. So, so due to the math, it's up to eight, up to 16 cores, up to 24 threads. And that's because the eight performance cores support hyperthreading. So you can, you can split the thread, right? You can do two threads per performance core, but only a single thread per efficiency core. So uh, that's two times eight, 16 plus eight is 24. There you go. <clears throat> and that's the, uh, the threading and the core count uh, math for Alder Lake. All right. Um, I like Marco, math. Did... <laughs> we all like math a little bit. I guess you have to if you're into computers, right? Um, Marco, did you want to dive in with anything? I've got a couple of more lined up here. I'm sure there's a few coming in the chat. But yeah, you know what? Let's um, I'm going to I want to make one two quick comments. First, I'm realizing how hard this conversation is going to be for me with this spreadsheet that I have in front of me. Yeah, I have to learn what <laughs> I can can't talk about. Yeah. But I, I also want to go back to to, to something uh, that Marcus said a few minutes ago when you asked him about his favorite features. You know, we in the lead up to this launch, you know, this is a really, you know, a highly anticipated launch from Intel. And I think something that's been lost in the messaging is just how leading edge the platform is. Mm -hmm. So let's forget performance and efficiency and everything just for a second for everybody watching. If you look at the platform that Alder Lake is launching on with, with PCIe 5 and DDR5 and Thunderbolt 4 and Wi-Fi 6E, mm -hmm. this is a like a really bleeding edge platform. Mm -hmm. So over and above just performance, I think, you know, the way this platform is launching really kind of pushes uh, Intel desktops forward. And that's just something I want to say before it gets lost in sort of the rest of the conversation. Um, can, but can I, I think, yeah, go ahead. Oh, please. Can, can I, can I add, can I add a little bit? Cause I, I just <laughs> yeah. got super excited when you said that. Marcus, uh, Marco is your straight man. It's like Marcus he, and Marco he asked me, here. He asked me for two. And so I gave two, but there's so right. much packed in here. Uh, right. <laughs> he, he, talk, he talked about, uh, talked about the different architectures and, and you added the integrated uh, Wi-Fi 60, which is great. Uh, it absolutely has that too. Uh, we've got the enhanced overclocking support, right? Uh, it's DMI 4.0. So your peripherals run faster than the old, than 3.0 and the last generation up to 28 lanes, 16 on five uh, on PCIe 5, PCIe 4 has up to 12. I mean, there's just so much packed in here uh, that, you know, I could probably spend the whole hour just listing off features, um, but it, I, I, I'm really excited and, and agree with you, and I'm glad that you said it, uh, that it's a leading edge platform as well. 
And I didn't even yet yeah. talk about cash, right? How we increased cash sizes and uh, it gets up to 5.2 frequency. Like, there's all kinds of stuff in this thing. Yeah, yeah there's just yeah. things that, you know, knowing how enthusiasts and, you know, people are really passionate about their preferred platforms and they're going to see a whole bunch of bar charts tomorrow. And I think that's <laughs> one part of the message that might get lost in some of the translation. It's something that I was just important that I feel that it was is worth mentioning before we start. But um, yeah. I think let, let's get the most uncomfortable thing out of the way first, right? So last week <laughs> you guys did the the you official right launch. The processors aren't weren't, aren't going to be available till tomorrow, but until you know, a launch the whole lineup and revealed everything that was coming. And in the discussions, there were some disclosures in terms of performance relative to the competition. Mm -hmm. And in the gaming disclosures, mm -hmm. um, there was some numbers from an AMD platform, and it turns out those numbers were run on Windows 11 pre-patch mm -hmm. on the AMD mm -hmm. side. Um, mm -hmm. Can you explain, just give some color on how that played out, what it's really going to mean, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, sure. So uh, first, uh, thanks for asking that. I, this isn't uncomfortable at all. This is the business, <laughs> right? Uh, and so just to add add some color first, you know, we've been testing this platform for months now, right? It takes years to bring one of these very complex microprocessor platforms to the market. And so we've been testing this thing for months. The, uh, we knew that we wanted to launch first and foremost with Windows 11 uh, because it was the newest operating system. And so we've deeply optimized the way the performance and efficiency cores work and the way this platform operates with Windows 11 um, because we wanted the best experience to be with the best operating system. Uh, and there's other things we can talk to later on uh, how we did that with the new Intel Thread Director, which we can talk about later. Another great, uh, great feature that's new uh, with Alder Lake um, that I do want to talk about later. But because of that, right? Because it, and we, because we've been doing this for months, uh, obviously we've been testing with all of these things before we knew that there was a patch coming. And in fact, the, it wasn't announced that a patch was coming until the week, the, the couple of days before we were set to actually launch. And so what we did was we had the internal conversation to say, you know, should we delay our launch? Uh, of a product because there's a new patch coming for the operating system that we've been running on? Should we uh, go ahead and launch and then with what we have, with what we know today uh, and be as transparent as we can and say, here's the configuration that we ran on um, or, or something in between. And so what we did was we said, okay, well, first let's look at all of our testing because we tested not just on Windows 11, we optimized for Windows 11, but we also tested on Windows 10. Uh, we tested across a lot of different productivity workloads, gaming applications, create creator applications. And uh, we launched with the claim world's best gaming processor because that vast uh, amount of testing that we did gave us the confidence with the uh, with the deltas that we were seeing in performance right with how large our leads were in some of those some of those game performance we said hey you know we we stand behind this and we look at all of the configuration we did it, it didn't matter windows 10 windows 11 from our perspective and the testing that we did in our uh, in our uh, across our labs globally we were very confident um, in our claim to world's best gaming processor uh, on the windows 11 platform that we were testing when we looked at the patch as it was coming out what we said was, hey, we know that there's a patch coming out and we're going to retest everything, uh, but we're confident in the claim because worst case, some of these may close, may, may get closer, but we, because the, the gap is so big uh, from where we are today and how we've optimized on Windows 11, we think that we can stand behind this. Turns out, uh, and you've seen some of the headlines here, uh, this, these aren't my words, right? That it's basically a wash uh, as, the, as the patch came out. Some things changed uh, down, right? Some things got worse, some things got better, uh, which is how some of these things work. But overall, it was basically a wash from a net-net performance perspective. Now you'll see, and that, that tied to some of the things that we saw in our labs too. And so you all will see the independent reviews. Uh, please look at those. I know I can't wait to see uh, what it come, how, how they start coming out. Um, but the confidence that we had with the testing and the amount of testing that we did gave us the confidence that this is the best platform we've ever put out. And frankly, the world's best gaming processor uh, that we've uh, in the world, right? That anybody's put out and we stand behind that. So confidence. bold claims, bold claims. Confidence I like it. <laughs> is sexy, right? Yeah, I can't wait. Sexy. I can't wait to see all these independent reviews come out <clears throat> and, uh, and validate that. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I redid all the platforms um, with Windows 11 and the latest BIOSes and, you know, all the, the latest versions of the benchmarks and updated literally everything and had to rerun 
a huge suite across, I think I did a, a 10 or 11 configurations. So I did a ton of testing. And what I'm finding with Windows 11 is um, there was obviously tuning done for mainstream platforms. So mm -hmm. uh, 12th Gen Core and the competition's mainstream platform. But man, did the HEDT platforms, it's still some work to be done there. So I think mm -hmm. there's some tweaking still to be done on Windows 11. And I think I am... Um, I, I started that we started the cast and I, I told people don't ask questions for future products that you're not going to get an answer for, but I'm going to actually ask you about it. I was going to go ahead. I was going to say yeah. that's fair game. So I think you may ha Intel may have disclosed this. I'm going to pop a question up on the screen. Yeah. Is there going to be an extreme series? Um, this go around, you know, or was X299 platform the last, I think Intel has disclosed that there, there will be some, future high-end desktop platform coming is that something that you can talk about yet is it, i know you can't give details i i can't comment but... on future platforms what what i what i will <laughs> what i so i'm sorry that's that's the yeah. uh this the standard thing I, I i have to make sure that i say sure. i can't comment on future platforms um okay. what, what i what i can say uh is that um kind of across the board including the uh the extreme series that we've done in the past what we what we try to do is to make sure that we give the uh, each segment of the user base uh, the best platforms that they can that that, that that they they can use right and so in this case the uh, the X series was you know high end desktop low end creator kind of workstation segment of the market um, we absolutely have products uh, targeted towards that that part of the market um, that said we do believe that this uh, that this enthusiast platform actually crushes a lot of the platforms or a lot of the workloads that. Uh, that that segment of the market tends to use. I mentioned Adobe before. I mentioned uh, Revit. There's a bunch of other creator applications that uh, that run really well on the Auto Lake S platform uh, and the unlock SKUs that we that we are launching. So, uh, if that's where you're targeting, I'd say take a look at this platform and see if it meets your needs. Amen. You know, for the vast majority of people watching, <laughs> the mainstream platforms are way more than enough horsepower. But you know, it was in there. I said, let's try to slip one in. We'll try to slip one by. Dave, let's uh, try. <laughs> Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, I, yeah, I see no, and, and, no, and I was going to say, you know, sort of dovetail onto what you just mentioned. Uh, one of our questions, um, you know, you've obviously put up, you know, uh, put up bragging rights that you're the fastest gaming processor on the planet, um, you know, with confidence there. Um, we'll we'll see the numbers when they come out tomorrow on that. But what about content creation and other mm -hmm. types of workloads, especially heavily threaded stuff that'll hit all of those cores when you have to chew through something that uh, takes some some serious multi-threading, whether it be Adobe Suite or or whatever whatever uh, content creation platform folks might be on. Yeah, so so really good question. You know, um, historically, uh, multi-threaded applications are are the places where uh, where we have room to grow and opportunity, right? And so part of the reason we went to a hybrid architecture, right, with the uh, 24 up to 24 threads was to close the gap um, to our, uh, to, to for those kinds of applications. And so uh, this platform absolutely is a giant leap in content creation, um, right? Because when you add in the things like the higher core counts, uh, the improved IPC, which is uh, about uh, at ISO frequency is a 19% IPC, um, leap, the larger cache sizes, all of those things, um, we, we end up with uh, things like 32, 36, 100% uplift generation over generation from the previous Intel generation of, of processors uh, for content creation applications. But, but to me, uh, the question you're asking is, versus competition and how are content creators actually gonna 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 do to so for exactly. us we we think that uh this this platform really does help close the gap now you'll see in those reviews how how far we've come to close the gap on the multi-threaded applications um and and so i can't wait to see what those uh what those show um so that you can see some of the things that we've seen in the lab uh but one of the places where we think that all the lake really shines isn't just on flat out benchmarks uh but real world usages right because we know that gamers don't just game and we know the creators don't just create we know that they do many things uh sometimes at the same time right and so uh one of the demos that we showed actually in the uh in the event where uh, where you guys participated in uh was a demo where there was a, a creation workload uh with gaming and what we show is when you have that kind of a workflow uh, because of the way alder lake operates and the way the intel thread director classifies uh the workloads and picks the right core at the right time for the right thread um, or for the right for the right workload it uh, we actually were doing better than comp on those so we th we think that there are certain situations where we do better than comp uh, we certainly close the gap uh, on content creation nice nice 
Cool. Well, we'll uh, we'll be looking forward to to Marco's numbers that hopefully show that tomorrow. Good stuff. <laughs> um, and, I should and, just and share actually, the, the. I should put the spreadsheet up now. All right, let's yeah, just do it. Do you want to put it up? Probably never get into the <laughs> process of from Intel again. Thanks. <laughs> no, there, there will be a black screen by the time this gets posted. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and actually, you know, I was I was I was thinking through this as well. Um, lots of lots of folks streaming in the uh, in the in the chat here. Um, but um, what what about on the on the platform side? Let's go back to the platform side again now as well. We we t you talk about PCI Express Gen five. You talk about mm -hmm. DDR five, mm -hmm. and you know some crazy speeds. Um, you know I think some of the OEMs are are hitting clocks up to like you know seven seven thousand megahertz now. I think mm -hmm. I saw it was the last headline we we saw across the wires. I think I saw um, an eight. I think I yeah. saw an eight today. Did you Come really? On. I did. So, I think I saw an so eight. Cr crazy fast speeds. Yeah, there you go. There's an eight eighty three hundred. Yeah. So. Okay, crazy fast speeds there. Crazy fast speeds uh, for a theoretical PCI Express Gen five, let's say SSD. This is certainly future proofing, but what about the you know out of the gate the the sort of the tangible benefits for folks? Obviously, we don't have PCI Express Gen five SSDs yet. Typically, DDR five latency tends, or a new DDR uh, memory type tends to have higher latencies mm -hmm. out of the gate, and then it matures and those clocks cycles are you know more more efficiently utilized with lower latency down the line mm -hmm. what what are your thoughts on that because it is you you guys are blazing a trail here it is mm -hmm. it is new and you know not widely available in the case of for example a PCI express gen 5 ssd for example yeah so so you asked a couple of questions there so let me let me kind of parse them out so first um on uh on pcie right so uh where are we at on uh, kind of performance out of the gate? Well, you know, because uh, there's no attached to PCIe 5, uh, all of our testing and everything that we've seen, everything that you'll be able to do is with, with is with four, right? Um, uh, and and attached for storage and discrete graphics through uh, PCIe 4. But the 5.0 lanes, I mean, it's up to 16, and because they're twice the bandwidth, gives you the ability with when you add the up to 12 that you get off the chipset for 4.0 to do a ton different, a ton of different configurations that you want to do. And so it just, you know, one of the taglines I like to I like to say when we talk about this is Alder Lake is really about adapting to the user, right? From the processor and the way the workloads work, uh, and and are directed through Intel Thread Director uh, to the the configurations that you have capable. Uh, based on your PCIe lanes uh, to your DDR choices that you want to make. Like, this is really the most adaptable and the most performant platform we've made. So uh, that, that's the number one thing that, that I would say for that. Um, the, the second though, uh, you know, when we talk about uh, the other the other kind of things that we've done for DDR DDR5 versus DDR4. I heard the implied question there about you know uh, the memory itself, right? Um, so all of our testing was with DDR5. We did DDR4 testing also, and what we found is that there's actual tangible uplift on DDR5, even though it is the less mature memory, right? And yeah, the latency is uh, is a little uh, a little higher on DDR5, but all in all, the performance benefit of DDR5 uh, it's there. Uh, based on our testing. Now, again, hopefully, uh, as the reviews come out, y'all will do your own testing and, and we'll see that show up in reviews of DDR4 versus DDR5. But for ours, we did see an uplift and benefit uh, making DDR5 the optimal use uh, for, for platforms uh, associated with this. Um, a couple other things that, that we, we put in the platform that we think are, are awesome. You know, I mentioned the in, increased L2 cache, uh, increased L3 cache. Now, the L3 cache is interesting because uh, L3 is actually shared between the uh, the PE &E cores. Um, and so uh, that, that means if we're offloading, uh, offloading tasks or offloading workloads over to the efficiency cores, it's actually sharing the cache and can access it faster um, if, you're, if you're moving workloads between, between the different cores. So kind of cool there. Um, and then there's, you know, you already mentioned some of the other things. One thing we haven't talked about uh, is any like the AI, right? And so it, we still have the integrated uh, Intel Deep Learning Boost. We've still got uh, the GNA, the Gaussian and Neural Accelerator. Uh, it's a tongue twister kind of name, uh, <laughs> but we we use we use that to to actually accelerate some uh, some of the AI workloads and some of the things we do with that. We talked about the the connectivity. You mentioned Thunderbolt Four uh, as well. Um, so there's a ton more in this besides just being future proofed. It is it is future proofed, but it is now ready and very very performant. 
Nice. Yeah. So you get fast cores, but you got to have uh, fast plumbing to go with it. So that, that's right. That, that makes sense. Cool. Marco, I'm sorry. Why don't you, why don't you dive in? I know you've got some burning questions, uh, having, uh, kicking the tires on that platform yourself the last few days. Yeah. I think what's, what's, what I think will be interesting to discuss and I'm not sure how much you could go into detail or because this technically is, uh, you know, partially Intel tech and partially on the software side, but with this architecture, you know, with the hybrid architecture, with the P cores and the E cores, there's obviously a lot of work that had to go into the software and working with Microsoft and, you know, to exploit thread director and to make sure that threads are dispatched properly through the CPU. So if you have, you know, a heavy duty workload, it's on those P cores. And if you have something that perhaps is running in the background, not important, it can be on the E cores. You know, can you elaborate and, or just and give some color on the work that went into Thread Director and, you know, optimizing on the software side and perhaps um, elaborate, is there a potential for future performance benefits as this evolves and the software gets more mature? Yeah, so so let me let me uh, I'll paraphrase somebody in the chat here and say uh, that the Intel Thread Director was created by very smart people for a purpose. <laughs> I like that phrase. Uh, I like that, Francois. I see you over there in the chat. Um, so uh, so what? I, uh, what uh, so let me let me let me let me uh, talk about this a little bit. So Intel Thread Director is actually not software. Intel Thread Director is yep. hardware, uh, and and it, it's hardware telemetry that is built into the core. Right, and what it does is it collects a bunch of information uh, about what's happening, right? About the workloads, about uh, where it's going, about what it wants to do, right? Uh, a lot of other, a lot of information that uh, that we've never had before, right? So. Uh, uh, in the past, right, workloads get characterized by, you know, really, in, really kind of limited, discrete information that was set a long time ago, uh, right? And so what this does is it is it goes much more granular uh, and dynamically adapts uh, what it the guidance that it gives to the operating system to tell it, hey, here's what you need to do with this. And so with what that does with that in with that new information with the more detailed information uh things like instruction mix and uh the status of what the core is doing does it have something on it right now or not uh is it running really hot or not is overclocking or not uh yeah. other and, and and some other relevant uh architecture stuff it's it then tells windows 11 uh or any operating system not just windows 11 windows 10 linux uh hey here's what you need to do Right now, we've optimized for Windows 11, but it works uh, elsewhere because, again, this is hardware based, and so it's it's uh, OS agnostic. Uh, there was a ton of work uh, to then to then optimize uh, what you do with that information, right, uh, on the operating system. And so, uh, what ends up happening is um, Windows 11 then can make the choice, or Windows 10 or Linux can then make the choice and say, okay, uh, this is a game. It really wants to run on these on a really high performing core. Uh, they can, I can get high frequencies, and so I'm going to go drop you on a P core. Uh, okay, this is an uh, antivirus application, uh, and it might have a low QoS, right, a quality of service um, that the that the developer put in. So I can probably put it on the efficiency core instead of running it on a really high, uh, really high performing core, right? And so it makes choices and makes and gives the OS that information, so the OS can then move things around. Um, you, you asked the, the second question about right, uh, does it get will it get smarter and evolve over time? A couple of things here. One, in order to have that intelligence, yeah, we, we had to train it, right? We had to characterize a ton of workloads. So there's a lot of a lot of work that went into figuring out what should go where, what information triggers and gives you a signal to go to go what. Think of it as a really big pivot table, and then it kind of looks uh, and figures out, okay, this is what this workload is. Where should I send it? Kind of thing, right? Um, and a lot of work went into a really detailed model. Um, over time, what will end up happening is uh, we'll get more information on, on characterization. We'll learn more about how workloads need to run. Uh, developers will learn more about where they want things to run. Uh, and so they'll, as we work more closely together and we work through that, uh, I think those things will, will work together to make faster efficiency, faster scheduling, and for it to just work better uh, at scheduling over time. And so uh, we'll tune this across multiple platforms. Um, you know, This isn't the first and only time this will be baked into our our hardware, right? It's in our hardware, so it'll continue uh, as we go. And so we'll continue to tune it for future platforms. Interesting stuff. It, it, let me let me just step back real quick, Marco, on this on this notion of thread director as well, because it's it's interesting to me that it's come out now. And I would think, you know, thread director, even in a 
equally balanced, you know, I don't know if you call it all performance cores or whatever architecture, you know, pre hybrid would have been a valuable resource um, because all cores are not created equal, even if they're the same type of cores. Um, it's just the silicon lottery within the chip, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Did did Alder Lake really sort of drive the the need for Thread Director, or was it just something that the technology became available? You know, you know now. I don't I don't know if you can answer that. If it's, it's sort a, of a well, chip no, architect a, kind of thing, it's a, it's a it's a good question. Um, you know, the, the question of whether whether Alder Lake drove the need or whether we would have gone down this path without a hybrid kind of architecture or not. Yeah. Um, uh, the way I'll answer this, and, and the guy who uh, who would answer this question, his name's actually Guy. He's, he's one of the co-inventors <laughs> of, of this thing. Um, the guy. <laughs> yeah, the guy. He's the guy. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, what what we've done, right, is, um, is with the co-engineering with Windows 11 is really enable consistent and optimized performance, right? And to your point, uh, all cores aren't made equal, even on the same, even on the same chip, even on the same wafer, right? Um, and so, uh, could we have used this on uh, on non-hybrid architecture? Yeah, probably. Uh, but because this is performance and efficiency, there was a greater need to uh, make sure that we put the right work in the right place for the best experience in a way that maybe wouldn't have existed if we were just going off of eight, eight performance cores alone, right? Um, and so, you know, did we have, did we need it to go drive the hybrid? Probably not. Uh, could we have done this without it? Probably, uh, but you put the two things together. We have a very high performance uh, set of P cores. We have a very high performance set of E cores. We want to give the best experience We've got a great partner in Microsoft uh, who we've worked with for a long time to help make sure that we can deliver the best and most consistent experience on Windows 11. Um, and yeah, it, it just it just made sense to focus on the Alder, Alder Lake launch to go make that happen. Sure, sure. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, and, and this just came in from Francois. I don't know if mm -hmm. we can toss that up there if you want to field it or not. But since you mentioned Microsoft, um, I can think of a few things, but why don't you go ahead and I don't know if you want to try and take a swing at that. <laughs> well, uh, so I, I would, the last part of your comment is what I'll, I'll talk to. The, without Microsoft support, it would be very limited, uh, the limited nature of what we're doing. Well, um, because we're taking this hardware, you know, because the telemetry is baked into the hardware and we have to give that hardware to something, uh, right, to the operating system, it's not just a, a Microsoft commentary, right? It's whatever operating system that this platform uh, sits on. Uh, it's just been optimized because of our, our deep enablement and our deep work with, with Microsoft. So um, that support has helped uh, make sure that it's the best and most optimal, and most consistent experience possible, but it does work on, uh, on other operating systems as well. It's just uh, more limited uh, in functionality because because we just don't have that same deep enablement and deep work that we've been able to do. But over time, you know, the, the more that this kind of work uh, kind of rolls out, I think the more we'll be able to do more of that work and that deep enablement work with other uh, other vendors, other ISVs, other OS uh, Vs as well. Cool. Very cool. Marco, what else think, you got? I think we should let's go in a completely diff different direction just for a second because we have we have <laughs> Ian in the chat, the tech tech Keith potato. Marcus nimble. Yeah. How how do they <laughs> taste? How do the twelfth gen processors taste, Marcus? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Uh, like I said, my, my daughters call this the golden waffle. And so with a little syrup, I bet you they're delicious. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, with, with a little syrup and perhaps some bacon, everything is delicious. Yeah, but, you know, that's right. I, I, Ian, Ian's known for taking bites out of wafers. Let's talk about, you know, process and packaging for a sec. Um, these processors, uh, the 12th gen core processors are built on Intel 7. Um, and you guys also made some tweaks, obviously, new socket new packaging, mm -hmm. thinner dye, thicker heat spreader. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about what the new socket enables and those 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 changes to the packaging, you know, why the dye is thinner, why the heat spreader is thicker, et cetera, et cetera? Good question. Well, yeah, I mean, there, there's a there's a couple of things I'll say. And, and just in the end, the, the net net answer here is uh, to make sure that we uh, deliver the best experience possible for for the people for our, for our customers, 
right? Like that, that is the net answer for, for everything that I'm about to say, right? So uh, <laughs> we, we did thicken, it. Are, you, are you showing the, the diagram here? Where yeah. we, we thinned down the dye by about 25%, yeah. uh, we, we thinned the stem by about 15%, right? Uh, compared, and, and so uh, this benefits everybody. Uh, now we we showed this because of uh, I think we were talking about overclocking, right? Because we know overclockers like to crank up the heat, uh, and so what this does is it dissipates heat better, right? Um, and so uh, the reason we do this is to make sure that we are able to deliver the again the most optimal, most consistent experience, no matter what you're doing, whether you're overclocking and cranking your heat all the way up, or whether you're just running really hot because you're running a bunch of really hardcore games uh, like Crisis uh, used to be, right? <laughs> Crisis Remastered, maybe Guardians. Uh, we'll see how that runs um, uh, as you go. And so the, the reason we did those is uh, to try to make sure that we spread the heat uh, more effectively and more efficiently uh, so that uh, so that your, your processor uh, runs the best no matter what you're running it on. Um, so that's the, that's the general uh, gist from a package perspective. From a socket perspective, uh, there's a couple things we needed to do uh, in changing the socket, uh, including changing the chipset. Uh, and that, that goes back to the future proofing comment we were, we were making earlier, right? Uh, the ability to plumb for DDR4 and DDR5, the ability to plumb for PCIe uh, 5.0 directly to the to the chip, uh, to the CPU, right? Um, so those are the kinds of things that, that we were enabling uh, beyond just the normal uh, shift of architecture that we had to do because now we've got the eight uh, performance cores side by side, up to eight performance cores side by side with the up to eight efficiency cores. Got it. Got it. <clears throat> cool. Um, we should, pr we should probably talk about overclocking, right? Um, of course. What do you, what do you, what are your expectations in, in general? So there's, th there's a good question here from, from Ian at, at tech, tech potato. Good to see you again, Ian, as always. Um, world records are, you know, broken, you know, via, uh, some pretty exotic methods with LN2 liquid nitrogen and some mm -hmm. crazy folks that know, really know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, but what about the average consumer, you know, sort of out of the box with a standard cooler, maybe even if it's a standard all in one cooler, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, what have you, how, how, how's this, how's this platform going to perform or are we, or is like, for example, at 12, 900 K, is it already pushing the ragged edge of clock speed? Uh, yeah, how much headroom good, do you think we're going to have? Good question. Uh, so let me, let me just start uh, by saying, uh, I'm not going to talk about overclocking headroom. Um, I'm not going to tell you how much headroom there is, uh, partly because it varies depending on the CPU, but mostly because I kind of want to keep it a surprise. What I will say <laughs> is you will not be disappointed. If you're an overclocker, you will not be disappointed by this platform. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one is uh, you can't overclock on all of the cores, so it's P core and E-Core overclocking, in case you were wondering. Uh, we carried forward the memory overclocking, so from DDR4 to DDR5. Um, so you can overclock the memory uh, as well, the, the ring too. So you put all those things together, uh, in addition to a couple things that we added new here, uh, one thing that we added new was uh, XMP 3.0, right, which enables the DDR5 uh, overclocking, but also has some cool things like new profiles. So you can actually set an overclocking profile and have multiple ones that you can write and you can control. Remember the comment I made earlier, guys, about you know giving the the control back to y'all, right? The adaptability. This is part of that, right? So you can you actually can set your own profiles there. Uh, an Intel Dynamic Memory Boost, which is really really kind of cool, uh, and and it helps overclock in a very different way and and boost the way your memory is used. Um, and and then the last thing I'll mention uh, for the you mentioned kind of the standard kind of out of the box. Uh, the new tuning utility actually has one click overclocking now. Uh, uh, we, we haven't figured out what to call the button. If it's just a boost button or overclocking button, call it what you want. Uh, but there's a one click overclocking that function now in the Intel uh, Extreme Tuning Utility where you just push it and you get one extra bin. So overclocking made simple, uh, one click, and you'll actually get out of the, uh, out of the box one bin of performance. Uh, out of the box. So uh, really excited on that as well, because that's that's new uh, for this platform too. I'm not sure if the Staples folks would mind, but maybe you should just go with the easy button. <laughs> I was trying really hard, trying really hard not to get uh, not to get sued or run afoul of my legal folks for copyright infringement. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to I'm give you some quick some quick feedback on XTU because I was playing with it. Oh, um, do it this past week. Oh, this is a super simple thing. You need an easy. Uh, return to defaults button 
that's ah. one thing missing from XTU. As it is now, you have to load the default right. profile, show the values, then save. You, you need a quick one button back to default. Reverse. Something to take, yeah. something okay. to take back to the Done. PMs. Done. <laughs> Done. Got it. Cool. <laughs> Got it. Got the feedback. Thank you. Feedback's a gift. No, <laughs> no problem. Excellent. What else we got, Marco? I've been yapping a lot myself here. Sorry. We got a lot. There's so much that I don't know what I can and can't say based on the data here. So let me look what the stuff we have prepared here. Um, we have another question from Ian. Um, yeah, I just threw that up there. Go ahead. Can dynamic memory boost boost the memory from JDEC to any XMP profile or just XMP1? Oh, that's a good question. Um, if if we if we have your follow up, let me let me take that and follow up uh, to make sure that I get the specific answer to your question right. Um, I think I know the answer, but I don't want to get it wrong in a live stream. So uh, let me take that back and follow up with you, uh, Ian. Got it. And just for everybody watching, so the dynamic memory boost tech that's coming with the 12th gen platform, um, with XMP 3.0 compatible memory, you it's essentially, you could think about it like turbo boost for memory. That's right? right. Instead of running at the top speed all the time, it can drop down to the JDX spec. So, you know, GDR5 uh, 4800 and then turbo up to the XMP spec when needed. Yep. So right. you don't absolutely have to use all that power all the time. So that is something new coming to this platform as well. That's right. And, and the thing I don't know is if it's only XMP profile one or any profile, I, yeah, like I said, I, I'm not gonna speculate. Let me let me follow up and make sure that I got the answer. Yep. Gotta, gotta, yeah. hand it to, gotta hand it to Chris with the visuals here. Good job, buddy, getting this up. <laughs> Look at this. There it is right there. In case you like pictures, you need to have that. Um, Good stuff. Um, interesting question that came in the chat here that can give us a little bit more fodder as well. Uh, very off track from our current conversation, but where was this thing designed? Yeah, uh, so um, we've got a couple of design design teams that partner globally uh, to do this work. So between uh, between our folks in Israel, we have a design center uh, out there, and uh, and our folks in uh, nice sunny Oregon, um, and there's there and that's here domestically. Uh, between those two uh, those two groups, um, there was a there was a great amount, and, and some folks in Santa Clara as well. Uh, there was a there was a great amount of collaboration to to come up with this stuff. So uh, it depends on which part we're talking about you know if you're talking about the uh the the layout uh of the architecture you're talking about things like the uh the overclocking experience or you're talking about things like intel thread director depending on which part it all comes together and so that's why it's uh that's why it's a global team the that comes after this so good question so a multinational coordinated multinational gotcha. multinational <laughs> from a multinational corporation right <laughs> there you go there you go. I've got one from Chris Marco, but um, that he slid to me on on Hangouts. But if you, I think you've got one, you look like you're you're chewing. No, on that. you know what? I, so <laughs> he mentioned the, the Israeli design team, and I was trying to remember the code name. Like, it, just to age myself, uh, that Israeli design team designed. I forget the code name of Centrino. But that Centrino platform many, many years ago kind of laid the foundation for like mm -hmm. the last 15, 20 years of process. So yeah, amazing, amazing design team out there. We have a great team out there. Great team engineers yeah. globally. It, it's, yeah. it, you know, again, to paraphrase, a lot of really smart people uh, for very specific purpose. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, <laughs> do your thing, Dave. Yeah, you know, no, I, I was just going to toss this in. I don't know if you can comment at all, but I guess one of your board partners kind of said something that maybe not have should have been said. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I, honestly, I'm not sure what disclosure uh, you're referring to. I got to actually go go look that up. But no, I, I can't comment on on disclosure of a die that we haven't officially uh, released or officially published with what we're going through here. Gotcha. gotcha. Good question, though. Let me <laughs> give me something to go look at. Look up. Yeah, there's been yeah, so many reports in. recently. I saw I saw some prices leaked. I saw all kinds of things. So who knows what what got leaked? You know when things are when the leaks are coming fast and furious. That's generally a good thing because folks are you know they're focused on you. You're so, interested. Yeah, it means, yeah. It means you're interested. And you're, you're trying to find out the new information. So it's a, it's I take it as a compliment. Sword. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, Chris, Chris, uh, who is handling the the backroom channels for us here, uh, did have a question that I thought was interesting, and I'm I'm not sure if it's. Um, you know, really as much of a concern, um, but we haven't really talked security relative to Alder Lake and, you know, whether you, you know, dig back into the, the good old days of Spectre and Meltdown and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> is there a concern with thread dispatching uh, as a thread, as a threat vector, excuse me, 
and side channel attacks and all that good stuff, whether it be thread director or any sort of, you know, thread dispatch kind of uh, technology, perhaps maybe it's even easier to just ask, what have you guys uh, been doing in this new architecture to mitigate those kinds of threats? Yeah, so it's a that's a good question. So let, let me just flat out say, uh, you know, yes, we are uh, we do have mitigations in place. You know, the the whole Spectre meltdown uh, scenario led us to create a totally new, um, totally new business unit for us, right? And so security is absolutely an important consideration for us, right? And so uh, we we try to be transparent about everything that we do, um, and and use that security, for example, to build trust in customers, partners, whoever's on this call right now, whoever's watching this, right? Um, and so uh, we have been working on a, a, a number of mitigation plans um, and there's, uh, I can, I, I should maybe be able to put it into the chat, but we have a, a list of uh, things that we've done both in the hardware and the software um, to actually protect against things uh, and attacks like that. So uh, it's it's a pretty long list. This team's been working uh, working for quite a while to make sure that you know we put things not into our new processors and platforms, but also our our previous ones too. But uh, just suffice it to say that uh, yes, there are security plans in place and mitigations that are both hardware and software related. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, it's a tricky one. I mean, and and you know the hackers are going to be looking for which I can't say. Know. Like I can't say out loud. Uh, it's yeah. an arms race. So if I if I say, hey, here's what we did, they'll be like, oh, okay. Well, let me go. Let me go. Let's go. Let's go attack. <laughs> let's that. go yeah. figure out the right. Yeah, let's go attack that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> ah, crazy business. I tell you what, you can write your ticket if you're a, if you're a um, a security engineer these days. It's uh, it's 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 the new frontier. It's big business, for sure as well. Crazy. It's very useful. So thank yeah. you for the work that you do, <laughs> all security <laughs> engineers. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's the tough stuff. Um, what else, Marco? I've got a couple here too. I think Ian's tripping I'm, still, but I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw the softball out there, right? We're <laughs> we're less than 24 hours away from launch. You've been working on this for months. What's going through your head right now? What are you hoping happens tomorrow morning? Mm. Uh, what I hope happens. Everybody who wants one to get one. I, I, so uh, one of the things that we make sure that we do uh, is launch with as much supply as we possibly can go. We, we don't like to announce things without having supply to back it up. And so we've been shipping uh, a lot of units out. I'm not going to say exact numbers, but, uh, but suffice to say that we've made sure that there's supply out there. So tomorrow, uh, go look for them. And so what I hope is that everybody who wants one will be able to find one. Um, that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, is I can't wait for those reviews to come out because I, and I want everybody to read them um, because you know I, I know with all of the different uh, the different patches and all these other things you know there's been some concern about whether claims hold up uh, we're pretty confident and so I'm I'm excited to see uh, to see that confidence hold up in independent reviews um, and, and then and then I guess last uh, I just want people to have really good experiences right part of the fun of my job is to be able to get to see people use the products we put out into the world. And I can't wait to see what you all get to do with this product that we've been making for a couple of years now. So I'm really excited to see. Uh, so uh, tweet at me, uh, hit me on LinkedIn, show me what you're doing, show me your builds, uh, all that stuff. I, I, I can't wait to see those. Uh, that, 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 that's what keeps me up uh, and keeps me going at work. Cool. I'll have to, we'll have to, what's your, uh, what's your Twitter user? Uh, at M Kennedy 602. At M Kennedy 602. 602. I will look you up now. 602. Yep, okay. 602. <laughs> just, you right. know, just a quick related question. I don't, you probably can't answer, but Ian's asked it and you just mentioned supply. Um, Ian had, I mentioned that there's some folks across a few forums that already got their hardware um, today. Does Intel, like, do you guys, are, is, are there internal people freaking out right now? Is it a big deal? How do you guys handle stuff like that? When, when Our internal freak, people freaking out. Uh, I'll tell you. Uh, so, so any any leaks, anything that that goes on market early is bad. It's bad for everybody. It's bad for uh, our supply chain. It's bad for consumers uh, because it feels like it's there's something unfair. Most of the time they show up and you have to pay way more than you probably should be paying for it anyway. So it's it's, it's not good for anybody. Um, the reason why it happens is because, you know, I mentioned uh, that we're shipping a bunch. Well, in order to make sure that you all can find one when, when you go to buy one tomorrow, we have to get it in the hands of the people who are going to sell it to you. And so we <laughs> ship them out uh, globally. We ship 
you know, hundreds of thousands, up to millions of units uh, ahead of time to make sure that they are where they need to be so that you can go get them. And sometimes some unscrupulous people like to then go and launch them. Sometimes it's just a mistake <laughs> and they accidentally, somebody pushes a button on code uh, and av- accidentally posts a website uh, and makes it public instead of keeping it private. It happens in lots of different ways. And so uh, I, I'd really like it if nobody leaked anything ever uh, and it, we, we were just able to launch when we when we need to launch so uh, so people can get what they wanted to get when they when they could get it. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know that that's realistic either. I think people are just really excited uh, to, to get this out in the hands of folks. Humans always getting in the way. Need a thread director for humans probably, I guess, huh? <laughs> that's right <laughs> something like that something, something like that. that something like that yeah. it'll work <laughs> cool what else marco i don't know I how to we're... frame i don't know how to frame this one without giving Uh-oh. away data no no if you look at the the lineup and the launch pricing and the performance claims that you guys have made it seems there's somewhat of a shift in strategy on this launch is that sort of fair to say like this is going to give away too much i should probably shut up but it seems there's there's a little bit of a shift in strategy with this launch would you agree? what do you mean marco like, what do you mean a shift in strategy I, everyone will see everyone will see so like if you're looking at the core i5 right the 12 600k here yeah you're looking at a 10 core chip for only 289 mm-hmm. right that's more cores with you know, a newer architecture, then you're just one step back, then an 11th gen core i9, then the top end core i9, you now have more cores um, with a leading end architecture for 289. Now, what that means in terms of performance, we'll know tomorrow. <clears throat> but yeah, what does that mean to everybody? <laughs> so, 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 I'll, so I'll tell you, kind aggressive. Of my, I'll tell you my thinking without diving yeah. deep into the pricing table uh, mm-hmm. for a moment. Um, uh, our thinking first is we're very proud and very confident in this product. If it hasn't come across yet, really excited about this product, really confident in this product. Uh, and we hope that you will be happy with this product. Um, and we think that it, is a premium product. And so we price, uh, particularly at the top of the stack, uh, in a way such that we think that uh, the market um, will take it. That said, we've also been listening to the community. We're not in the business of just, you know, squeezing just the squeeze, right? We want to price things fairly. And so we want to compete up and down the stack on performance, price, and experience. And so for us, you know, we look at things like perf per watt, uh, when maybe in the past, we were only looking at you know, top end performance, right? Um, and we rightly got called out for that. Uh, we, we've we started changing features like the memory overclocking, like I talked about before. Uh, we've been uh, aggressively looking at what our pricing structure looks like to match uh, what the market can bear and to match, uh, to match where we are from a performance perspective too, so that we can have a true uh, solid price or perf per dollar uh, conversation as well, because we want to compete kind of across the board. So we'll compete for that halo. We will continue to do that. There's no shift in that strategy, Margo. We we are 100% going for the top performing parts (laughs) all the time. Uh, Up and down the stack though, we can have a conversation about how we want to go compete. And uh, we think we want to be competitive across the board. I don't know if that's that's helpful uh, for, for kind of where you were going. This would have been a very different conversation 12 hours from now. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's that's perfect for what we can talk about today. Thank you, sir. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah, we're... Thanks for asking. It's a good question. It's Thank it's you. a tough one. We're all trying to tap dance around the embargo, uh, respect the embargo guidelines, but um, but it's good stuff and it's exciting. And tomorrow's tomorrow's coming soon, and uh, you'll you'll have Marco's hard work as well as a few others around the interwebs to read uh Marcus. Um, so you'll have, uh, you'll have lots to chew on tomorrow yourself as well. I can't wait. I blocked out time. <laughs> I'm flying actually. So I blocked out time so I could read, uh, on the, oh, there on the plane. You go. so yeah, I'm excited. Nice. Nice. Well, we're, we're at the, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna be burning the midnight oil. I know Marco's got a ton more work to do still, and mm. I'll be helping out. Um, and yeah, we're, we're reaching the, the, the bottom of the hour here and, um, we thank you, Marcus, for your time and uh, for joining us here today. Uh, folks should stay tuned. Uh, the, the reviews are going live tomorrow. Um, we will also have, in addition to Marco's efforts on um, just the CPUs, uh, we will have a couple of system builders who have sent us uh, some interesting uh, products as well. And 
we will probably be announcing within a couple of days an Alder Lake gaming system giveaway from a major who I think we can probably say uh, is a bird of prey. How's that? <laughs> can I can I sign can I sign up? Can I sign up for that? <laughs> you would be you no. would be uh, not not qualified. I'm sorry, <laughs> not eligible. <laughs> you might be qualified, but not eligible. With the shot. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be right. Well, thanks thanks for having me, guys. This was this was fun. Uh, you know, I've, I've said it a couple of times, but really excited about this product. Really excited to see you all get it in your hands and see what you can do with it. Um, we are confident it's the world's best gaming processor. We have worked with the ecosystem to bring it to y'all to future proof it to make the best optimized experience that you can possibly have across content creation, across games, across all these things. And so we we're really excited to see what you do with it. So thank you for having me. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And that sounds great. We're looking forward to it tomorrow. Stay tuned, folks, where you can find us on the web at hothardware.com, twitter.com slash hothardware, youtube.com slash hothardware vids right here where you should hit thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, and stay tuned because we will be giving away a decked out Alder Lake system uh, from one of the majors uh, in the days ahead. So we'll be announcing that where you can get in at, on the action at hothardware.com. Own some Alder Lake for yourself. Marcus Kennedy of Intel, thanks so much for joining us today. Great to see you, bud. Good to see you too. All thanks right. again. Take, take care. Thanks, everybody, and uh, thanks for stopping by.